The Earth is always changing, but this dynamic drama plays out over millions of years, time scales so immense that our human lives pass in the blink of an eye. But every once in a while, we get the opportunity to glimpse the geologic processes that are always churning beneath our feet. Recently, a swarm of 2,000 earthquakes rumbled the ocean floor just a few miles off the coast of Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada. This sent shockwaves among geologists as this occurrence has not happened in 20 years. Now scientists are concerned that these seismic events may indicate the imminent arrival of something more sinister within the area. So, why did these earthquakes occur, and what insights do they offer into what lies ahead? Let's find out! Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Deep beneath the North Pacific Ocean is a slumbering giant awaiting to come alive. A volcano submerged under 4,800 meters of water off the coast of Canada set off a swarm of earthquakes in March 2024. These earthquakes rumbled the Juan de Fuca Ridge located roughly 150 miles off the coast of Vancouver Island in British Columbia. At its peak on March 6, the ridge delivered roughly 2,000 tremors in a day and as many as 200 minor earthquakes within a single hour. The earthquakes were detected by Ocean Networks Canada's Endeavour site, which is part of the Northeast Pacific Time Series Undersea Networked Experiments Observatory, better known as the Neptune Observatory. An increase in seismic activity off the Pacific coast is an obvious cause for alarm. The earthquake-prone Cascadia subduction zone is responsible for some of the most devastating earthquakes in the region's history. Many people are familiar with the San Andreas fault line in California that has previously caused devastating earthquakes. But the reason why the Cascadia subduction zone fault line is so much more powerful than the San Andreas fault has to do with the way the two tectonic plates are meeting. The Juan de Fuca plate is slowly sliding underneath the North American plate, or at least it should be. The reality is that the North American plate is kind of stuck, so the Juan de Fuca plate is continually trying to press under the North American plate. This is creating a lot of built-up pressure and energy. At some point that energy will snap and release itself, causing what is likely to be the largest earthquake in modern history. Located approximately 50 to 100 miles off the Pacific Northwest coast, the Cascadia subduction zone spans about 620 miles from the northern reaches of California through Oregon and Washington, and ending off the coast of Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Theoretically, the significant seismic event, known as the Big One, could occur anywhere along this fault line. But here's the thing. Surprisingly, the 2,000 earthquakes that hit Canada's coast did not raise an alarm as expected. The site, called the Endeavour, is a string of hydrothermal vents along the Juan de Fuca Ridge. It makes for a specially thin crust on the ocean floor. The Endeavour site is monitored continuously as part of the Neptune Observatory run by Ocean Networks Canada. Since 2018, the region has become more seismically active. When magma bubbled up to the surface in March this year, it sent seismographs reeling. The tremors were light duty. Even though they jolted the fault line over 200 times per hour, they posed no threat to humans. Ocean Networks Canada measured the strongest events at around 4.1 on the Richter scale. The vast majority of the earthquakes that occurred were less than magnitude 1. According to geologists, these low-level tremors are no cause for concern as it's occurring along the Juan de Fuca Ridge, which is where the Juan de Fuca Plate, the smallest tectonic plate in the world, and the Pacific Plate are separating. Thankfully, this seismic action is unrelated to the Cascadia subduction zone that could one day deliver the ever-dreaded Big One. One geologist said, Mid-ocean ridges aren't actually capable of producing that large of earthquakes, not too far above a magnitude 5 and it is not going to trigger the big one on the subduction zone. Despite their insignificance, these mini quakes say a lot. They allow scientists to track where things are happening, where things are breaking, and where things are moving around. So, what exactly caused all the shaking? 
Experts suspect that these tremors are a sign of impending magmatic rupture. That means that magma is likely starting to add new material to the ocean floor, creating a new oceanic crust. Because the Pacific Plate and the Juan de Fuca Plate are pulling apart, the resulting crack gets filled with super-hot magma, but that magma loses its quality pretty quick as cold seawater solidifies the oozing magma into hardened crust. It's a process quite familiar to geologists. The Juan de Fuca and Pacific Plates are pulling apart at the fault line along the Endeavour site. As the segments pull apart, the margins of each plate thin toward the mantle below. Once they separate far enough, cracks form and superheated liquid rock rushes through. The magma cools right away in the frigid seawater, and new ocean floor is born. The most likely reason for the quakes is that the seafloor is stretched to its maximum extent and has built up a great deal of stress. At the Endeavour site, this happens when the plates pull apart by about 3.3 feet, and the stress is ultimately relieved when magma rises up into the thinned crust and cools. This happens on approximately 20-year cycle, which puts the area right on schedule. The last time it was this seismically shaky was in 2005. Since March 6, the earthquake activity has calmed down, though at a slightly heightened background level. Scientists are now watching the area closely. The continuous monitoring of the Endeavour site began in 2011, so the team hasn't had access to near real-time data of a magma intrusion like this before. They have many questions, ranging from the impact on the hydrothermal vent system to the source for the magma that will ultimately form the new crust. A lot of it is fundamental science questions of how does Earth's crust form, why do these events start where they start, and what exactly is the trigger that brings magma in? This ongoing research and monitoring of the Endeavour site provides scientists with invaluable data. The quakes are interesting scientifically because they can reveal details about how the ocean floor pulls apart and new crust forms. Scientists are now on track to study the impact on the subterranean hydrothermal vents and the diverse Endeavour ecosystem. Hot smoking chimneys support deep-sea tube worms, crabs, and a wide range of bacteria. Underwater earthquakes can not only topple existing sulfide towers but also alter the way fluids travel beneath vent systems, changing the chemistry and temperature of the vent. This can lead to marine life being displaced and reorganized. Scientists are eager to understand the impact this event might have on the unique ecosystem surrounding the hydrothermal vents at the Endeavour site. Additionally, they're curious about the source of the magma that will ultimately form the new crust. These tiny tremors, far from being a cause for alarm, are a scientist's dream, a window into the dynamic processes that continuously reshape our planet. But the forces that reshape our planet are totally unpredictable, so for now, Geologists are waiting to see what happens next. What are your thoughts on these earthquakes? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.